you want to be able to get enchanting books without having to mine for emeralds all the time, I'm going to show you how. Don't you go anywhere. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night. Depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Avamance, in my farm tutorial series. Today, we are going to make a farm for a very underrated resource, sugarcane. People don't collect sugarcane the way they should. You really should get lots and lots of sugarcane. It's not just about making cakes. No, you can have it for sugar, of course, which means you can make fermented spider eyes, uh, which obviously then means you can go on and create different types of potions. But it's not just about that. It's not just about making books. It's about trading. Clerics love paper. And if you go and trade with librarians, sorry, not, not clerics, go and trade with librarians, you can swap your paper for emeralds and then you can swap your emeralds for enchanting books especially mending books which is something that will help you throughout the game and it means that effectively your sugarcane can be used to buy mending books now if that doesn't motivate you to make a sugarcane farm i don't know what does let's crack on with it for this build you are going to need two chests 36 rails six powered rails 30 pistons two observers one minecart with hopper 30 sugarcane, about 74 oak logs-ish, maybe a little few more, two buckets of water, 64 of your structural blocks. You might need maybe a few more, so do go with a few extra. Take two stacks and you'll have stacks, obviously, two of them. Two lots of a step, about 120 glass, 15 redstone dust, one hopper, eight buttons which are optional, two levers which are not optional, 28 glowstone which is very optional, around about a stack and a half of slabs, this could be stone, this could be wood, it's entirely up to you, about a half stack, 24 to a half stack of a different type of step to the one you have down here, and approximately a full stack of dirt. We're going to try and build this from the bottom up to make it as survival friendly as we can. So you need to have a fairly long I've got 15, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 long, and you can see that it is 5 wide. Believe it or not, you can have this up to 31 long if you wanted to, but I'm going for 15 because I'm not greedy. And then pick at some point along here, doesn't actually matter where, I'm just going to go there and there and lob in a double chest. It's all you need, just a double chest. Take out one of those and pop a hopper by shift clicking in and if you see that little tail is pointing into the chest so anything that goes into the hopper will go into the chest then take a normal rail and all the way from here run a rail shift clicking when you go over the hopper run a rail all the way the entire length do exactly the same along the back there, 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 there. and there and then take powered rails between them here and also at this end here then pick out the middle block pop in a lever and turn it on that will power that rail pop in a lever at this end and turn it on that will power that rail and what we're going to do is we're going to have a cycle a minecart with hopper cycling round and round and round and it won't stop because it doesn't need to the power is enough for it to keep going now at this point you have a choice. You can, if you wish, have your minecart with hopper visible as it runs along these two long tracks. That is entirely up to you. You can totally, totally do it that way. I quite like that. Or alternatively, you can have it hidden by using a solid block. It's entirely up to you. It is personal taste. But what you must remember is over the box, over the chest, you must put some upside down steps so you can actually access it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a row of glass up to the last straight part of track. Then I'm going to come around the other side and I'm going to do exactly the same running all the way along. Now there is an option this farm that doesn't use minecart with hoppers. It just uses hoppers. It's quite iron hungry obviously with lots of hoppers and the longer you do it the more hoppers you're going to use. You can make it pretty much infinitely long, but it's quite expensive. It's entirely up to you if you want to do it that way. Then come around this edge with some, I like to use stone brick. The reason I use stone brick is just a nice looking block. You can use whatever structural block you would prefer and cap off 
that end like that and then put a log on each corner like this again this is going to be decorative this is not part of the function of the farm but I just prefer to have it because it just looks nicer so that is basically the footprint of the farm that you're about to be building now you are faced with another choice right now because whatever block you put here is going to be visible through the glass so it's actually important that you decide if you've done glass along here what block you're going to put here I like to have wood it looks nice through the glass let me just show you so it looks quite nice like the, the mine carts going along some kind of railway siding so pop wood all the way along here like this that's perfect and then again we need to decide what block we're going to use because what we're going to have is we're going to have a dirt block here like that an entire row of dirt blocks all the way along here like this whoops don't fall off your glass so I'm trying to build this in survival a way as I possibly can whilst in creative and bring that all the way along and this is what's going to house your your uh, sugar cane and that, that's perfect that's exactly what we need now in here it doesn't matter what blocks you use you can use any blocks whatsoever because it's not going to be seen so just use a block that you know is fairly far away dirt is often quite a good one and we're going to fill up this entire trench with your filler block whatever that might be one there one there and there one there and one there oh i noticed i have missed there and just for complete sake there right so now what we've got to do is we've got to fill this trench up with water but it doesn't have to be water sources thank goodness you can just put water all the way down the middle because if it's got water touching it even if it's not a full water block even if it's a flowing block that will allow the sugar cane to grow it is enough now it's time to start to build up the structure from the bottom up so first off put a row of whatever structural block it's going to use yep go over the glass that you did because looking at dirt through glass is definitely less attractive we don't want to do that so come all the way along here like this and that covers up the dirt very very nicely which is great that's what we're after and then where the glass was whether you if you use didn't use glass for this please do do use glass now hop up there and put a row of glass all the way along the top like that come along the opposite side it's there I, whoops I fell off so come along the opposite side and it is there so I've done one too many glass there I didn't mean to put a row of glass all the way along like that now we're doing 15 so this should count 15 rocks of glass one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and I've come up I got 16 because I've gone one too far for goodness sake right, let's try again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen that's perfect thank goodness for that and then cap off again around the end with your structural block same at this side all the way across like that and then on here what I want you to do is I want you to bring a bridge across that water all the way to the other side and this particular block doesn't matter but the next block will so decide what block it is you want to have in here and again I'm going to keep it consistent by having um, the the wood because I think the wood just looks nice so but I'm gonna have it so as the woods kind of facing inwards so it's probably easy to do it from here right so so you see the grain of the wood it just makes for a, a more interesting look and then come there and there with that similarly this side come along all the way whoops there and whoops there and there so we're just starting to get a little bit of structure which is superb and then we want another structural block down the middle of this like that 
Next step is to get a piston. It's a normal piston. It is not a sticky piston. And you're going to put a sticky, uh, a normal piston on each of those blocks at the back like this. And then the same on the other side. One on each of these blocks like this. So that is a row of 15 on each side. So that's 30 pistons in all. It's a lot of pistons. If you've not got enough iron to make those pistons, that's cool. Don't worry about it. Just do less pistons. It still works. It actually works if you only have one piston. But it's obviously nicer and better to have a number. The next thing we're going to do is to get observing. Where's my observer block? This is one of my favourite blocks in the game. If you look, when you place down an observer, its little red bum at the opposite side of its little face there is ready to let out a redstone fart at a moment's notice. And what I want you to do, I want you to count from this first block that comes between the pistons. I want to count to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And on top of each of these two pistons, you want to be putting a um, an observer block. And you want it so the little red bum is pointing inwards. The second one's sometimes tricky. Notice, little red bum pointing inwards like that. So what happens is when this little face here, this little cute observer face, sees an update, and an update would be the sugar cane growing up past its face. Once it sees that update, it lets out of its little red bum a little redstone fart. And that little redstone fart is captured by this redstone that we're going to run all the way along to the end of the pistons. It doesn't have to go any further than that. And this is why you can do this up to 31 blocks long, because if you have that coming out there, that goes 15 there, 15 there, you can have it, is it, no, it's 29 blocks, sorry, 29 blocks long, 15 there, 15 there with the one in the middle being shared, 29 blocks long. And uh, you get quite a lot of sugar cane from that then. And now you've got a choice. You do not have to have any more observers. Sometimes you might want more observers, perhaps the sugar cane at this end is going to grow faster and you want to harvest it quicker, but eventually these ones in the middle are going to grow. And when the ones in the middle are going to grow, all you need to know is that they will fire all of these pistons, absolutely all of them, which will knock off any uh, sugar cane that may have grown um, past the face already. And it doesn't matter because sugar cane only grows three high, so you're not going to break it. And now you've got yet another choice. I personally like to use glowstone on the rest of this build here. But you don't need the light. The light is not important. The sugar cane does not require the light to grow. To, it just is, I quite like the look of it for no other reason than that. So get your glowstone all the way along there like that. That is perfect. Don't forget to build up your logs on these corners. all the way along here and like that and you are ready to roll speaking of rolling guess what Egypt forgot to put the minecart with hopper on so we're going to cheat a little bit because we can't remove enough dirt and whatnot to push the minecart with hopper so what we're going to do is we're going to replace that with a powered rail we're going to pop that on and then we're going to put the minecart with hopper on there when we flip this lever, it's going to shoot the minecart hopper off. We then remove this quickly and put down two normal rails and we are golden. So that goes out like that. That goes there. That goes there. Nothing more complicated than that. And we just about made it. There we go. Whoopsie. Oh, sorry about that. That was a complete fail. So let's carry on with the structure of the build. Again, survival style. So I need to get myself back on this level here. And we're going to pop that and that there. We're going to bring in, where's my sugar cane? We're going to start to plant up the sugar cane in here. So because we've got water behind this dirt, it will allow sugar cane, absolutely no problem. All the way across there. We're then going to put a row of gr glass, not grass, don't put grass there, that just won't work at all. Put a row of glass there and another row of glass right there. Like that. And then you can jump down because we're going to get back up there again in a minute and you can bring this around make sure that you fill those sides in as well bring this around fill in those two sides 
get your glass and your sugar cane plant your sugar cane in there like that and then go one two and make sure you've got three height window of glass on both sides now again you don't have to use glass here if you don't want to you don't have to be able to see these sugar canes it doesn't matter but it, I just find that it's nicer to be able to see what's going on inside your farm and uh, fill those in as well so on the outside of the farm I'm just going to show you from a distance this is kind of the visual that you're going to be seeing but obviously we never left the farm because we're still here if I can actually land there we go and pull this up all the way around make sure you fill in the blanks otherwise you end up with dark areas that mobs can spawn in and that won't do at all there we go so we've got three high glass now I like now to put another full row of the structural block it's entirely up to you this actually doesn't matter but I like to put a full row of the structural block because I think the height offsets the length quite nicely come around in fact don't forget to bring up your sides doing this survival style just so you guys can follow it a little bit easier um, in creative it's a darn side simpler I tell you that for nothing okay just bring those all the way around there and those all the way around like that now if you wish you can bring your structural block across the top of this it does help the very very occasional little bit of sugarcane escapage that you can get like that perfect then get yourself whatever roof block you want to use now I tend to use slabs on the roof and the primary reason why I use slabs is because then they become a non spawnable area you can't get mobs spawning on it they're not going to come and spoil your day and as a result um, the world is a happier place frankly so I'm just gonna pop that on like that bring this all the way up that actually is no obligation to put a roof on this at all it doesn't actually matter but for the sake of look I think it just looks much much better and then you can put whatever you know structural block roof block whatever you want on top of here I'm just going to finish off this roof and I'll be back with you so this roof is completed now if you wanted a more rustic feel you could use a wood roof of course you could but I wanted this to be a little bit more industrial it is finished on the top now so we can very very simply just jump down you can see it's a fairly industrial feel and we're just going to augment that a little bit by bringing in some stairs I just want to take off the harsh edges a little bit um, even in an industrial zone you don't have massively hard edges all over the place so let's just take these out I'm using a, a different type of stone again just to contrast from that stone brick otherwise it look just a little too bricky and if you wish you can also put in some underpinning on here remember that it's still fairly industrial so it's not coming out like on these sides because there's no roof there we just want to underpin that roof so as it looks a little bit more structured there you go like that and then also if you wanted to you could get yourself some stone buttons and you can use the stone buttons just to add some texture to the outer sides of these two where you've not got the steps otherwise they do look very kind of vertical and up and downy and that won't do now if you want to you can decorate the side somehow I'm not going to do it on this tutorial because that's not what we're trying to achieve so we have got a very functional sugarcane farm that will produce you plenty of sugarcane over time on a uh, AFK basis as long as the farm is loaded you don't have to be you know stood in front of it staring at it it will work absolutely fine as long as you have the chunk loaded what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go AFK for about half an hour just to see what the hourly rate production of this farm is. So we are just approaching the 30 minute mark. You can see that both sides are, let's come around the other side, 
both sides oh look that one's nearly full now look so both sides are nearly full which means they'll probably have another pump we've got about i don't know a minute left of the time before the 30 minutes is up so i will chat through that one minute in case it does pump that extra one out but what we've got kind of in terms of extra decoration you could bring in some more lighting you could bring the the roof out one bit further and pop those struts so they come out sideways it's entirely up to you really the way you want to do it or you can just sit and stare at that thing going round and round and round because you've got nothing better to do in your life i'm going to check to see where we are after those 30 minutes now and we've got 44 sugar cane in 30 minutes and i suspect that's going to pop in the next minute or two as well so it's probably a fairly low count and every time that goes around look it's popping one more because the um the minecart with hopper has got stuff in it and every time it goes around that it's collected it's popping it in it'll go up another one in a minute there we go bang 48 so you're probably looking at about 50 sugarcane an hour maybe a little more as much as 60 sugarcane an hour depending on what's going on so i think that is not too bad one very easy very simple um two-sided sugarcane you could call it a micro farm if you want to if you want to make it smaller it could be a micro farm i say this is a sub-industrial farm because you can make it much bigger you could also if you wish to you could um make multiple layers with multiple uh, same footprint but just repeat it on top of each other that's perfectly uh, perfectly possible you could do that i think that's a really great and easy way to collect your sugarcane why are you collecting the sugarcane remember i said at the top you're collecting the sugarcane because you want it for things like trading with villagers uh, especially clerics for paper which will get you emeralds those emeralds can then be used to trade with others to get things like mending books and other enchantment books so actually you could be turning this sugar chain into mending books for enchantments or other really important enchantments it's actually a huge huge important resource and i recommend you collect as much sugar cane as you can in the game it's not just about making cakes you know oh no if you have enjoyed this video please do remember to slap that like button it'd be great to know you're enjoying it and i will keep on making them and also if you've not done it already you're very naughty but please do hit that subscribe button it'd be great to see you in my sub club and i look forward to seeing you in another video you take it easy now bye